I am Lucas Mack, and I'm on a mission to see the hurting get healed and the healed go out and heal others in order for all of us to experience the true love and light we desire. This podcast is me sharing my journey with you so you don't feel alone in your journey. Welcome to the Golden Rule Revolution. Hello, brothers and sisters, and welcome back to another episode of the Golden Rule Revolution. I am Lucas Mack. Thank you for joining me on this journey. And I am recording this on March 20th. So 3-2-0-2-3. And it goes the same way forwards and back backwards, palindrome number. Um, and guys, I've just don't know how to describe the darkness that I I am feeling. Um, (laughs) So many people are feeling right now. I know you're feeling something. If you're watching this channel and you're watching uh, this video or listening to this podcast, wherever you are around the world, I know you're feeling all of it. And so I had a, I think this podcast, I just want to, talk about some of the thoughts that have gone through my mind. And one of the things I went to a Tony Robbins event, um, gosh, probably 2017, probably six years ago, it was in front row at this Tony Robbins event. It was amazing. In fact, uh, I was, he led us in a guided meditation and I had my eyes closed and I could smell him and I look, opened my eyes and he was looking right in my eyes. It was, it was wild. Um, Anyway, he has a saying that um, progress equals happiness. Progress equals happiness. And truly, it does feel that way. If we feel stuck, that's when dread, fear, hopelessness, helplessness comes into play. When we feel stuck, we're so reliant on an external force to bring us money. And if that goes away. We're stuck and we don't know. And that leads to dread and fear, like I just said. But progress does equal happiness. In fact, energy and the word emotion is E, motion, energy in motion. Emotion is energy in motion. So when we don't feel like there's a next step to take that will benefit us, when we don't feel like there is a place for us to go that is a place of refuge and reprieve from this dark energy. I don't even know why I'm tired of these words, dark energy, consciousness, all the, all these words, what are they really? But you know, if you know what I'm saying, I (laughs) this podcast is just me trying to figure out what to say because we're all in this, but I've been in such a dark um, phase and I've been questioning really. I've been, you know, my journey, so many of you, I got a really beautiful email from a sister this morning from Australia um, saying that the questions I talk about are the same ones she holds in her heart. So that was really sweet that because I talk about faith and doctrine and religion and God and Bible and scripture and, and all these things. And really just seems like such a messed up paradigm that we find ourselves in the fact that this 3D existence, the or existence, this or that, up or down, black or white, left or right, um, all these ors, these binary choices seem really messed up. I mean, it, it just seems like the very premise, whoever created this existence um, with all the trauma, all the evil in the world, all the depression, all the abuse, all the sickness, infirmity, diseases, lies, propaganda, government control, poisonings. Like I could go on. I don't want to brush you, but you know what I'm saying? It's like, is this the reality of a loving God? I think that's really just, let's be honest for the first time ever. I talked to a lot of Christians, um, And it's hard to talk to them because when I talk to them, they want to stick to the script because if like they deviate from the script, then what does that mean about the script that they're running? I find it's like, 
So it's like, oh yeah, praise God, or you know, God is good. It's like, yeah, God is good. God is good. And in fact, what is the word God and good? This one extra O in that word, it's very similar. In fact, the rich young ruler came to Jesus and said, uh, good rabbi, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus responded to him, responded to him saying, why do you call me good? There's only one good, and that is God. So what Jesus was saying was, why are you calling me good rabbi? Because God is the only good one goodness that there is. All sorts of goodness comes from him. The Bible says in James that every good and perfect gift cometh down from the father of light. So maybe God has left us in this dark existence where it even says that, and God remembered Noah. So God left Noah in the ark, in the flood, in the rains. And it says, and he remembered Noah. It's always struck me as like, well, what was he doing? Not thinking about Noah. Where was he going? Is he omnipresent, omniscient, knowing all things? He had to remember Noah. I find that to be a fascinating verse. But perhaps God is good. And yet we are placed in this most egregious. I don't want to sound depressed and I don't want to make you feel depressed, but I look around you for, maybe you've heard me say this was like, Jesus supposedly is coming back to roll and rain with sonic drive-ins and ugly strip malls and homeless encampments. And it's insane. And the irony also, I've been wanting to share this on a podcast, the same irony that we're fighting this one world government, one world religion, one world currency, one, 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 this oneness of this dark consciousness can be applied the same way when Jesus rules and reigns for a thousand years. That's a one world government. There will be one world currency. There will be one religion according to the beliefs held by many. That's a one world religion. That's a one world government. So are they the same? Is it our perspective? Are we stuck in this dark duality looking for some external validation, looking for a solar flare, looking for the Schumann residence to to increase? I mean, looking for something external or perhaps death is the greatest lie. Maybe the game to be played is once we realize and surrender our fear of death is when we can truly live, which I do think is a big component of living to face our death, the fear of death. But it also seems like what's happening, we have no control over, no power to influence, no no self-actualization in the 3D. And that's where, in my case, I get incredibly down and frustrated. And I've talked about my wife's health journey, which we're still going on. And I've had, I have four children and all of them have been sick in one way or another. Crazy stuff, horrible, makes me break down and cry when I see them suffering. It's the worst. It's the worst. I'm literally taking care of five people in this house, holding it together as best I can. And yet looking around me and like, this is it. This is what we've come to. This is reality. And look, I know I have everyone. I don't even know why I'm qualifying, but I want to say that I know people have it worse. People have it better. That's not really the point. I am grateful for what I have. What I'm saying is the even very concept of suffering seems ridiculous. The concept of evil, the concept that these bad things happen. And I have talked a lot on here about soul contracts that we've chosen. And that takes accountability. It takes responsibility. It makes us all heroes. And that is the case. And yet I would still ask God, who I made this soul contract and agreement with, why? What's the point? Is it truly to experience the absolute vile darkness and evil that exists apart from you, God, to know finally, once and for all, when we return back to you, that you are the good, perfect father, that might be the case. And if so, I wish it was a little bit more overtly stated. (laughs) I wish I could say, hey, is this 
the case and God says, this is the case. I'm like, okay. I haven't had this realization not like three weeks ago. So I've always had these visions that I will lead these massive stadiums filled with people that we will have healing events that the spirit of God just pours out. Love just pours over people and people heal. And I don't mean necessarily physical healing. I mean, we have hundreds of volunteers and think of the biggest stadium you can imagine. And there's hundreds of volunteers waiting and we have music playing. And it's like, do you need to be held? Do you need to cry? Do you need to be loved on? Do you, what do you need? Come, come. The music plays and we just love one another. And this beautiful spark of humanity and healing creates the true revival that we all are looking for. The reviving of the love of one another, the love of God and the love of one another. And also at these events, I've also seen that the perpetrators, the, the people that cause the pain will also be at these events and they also can come down. We will invite them down without judgment and scorn. And we'll say, do you need to be healed? Are you willing to be healed? Are you a cause of someone else's pain? Come, let us hold you. Let us love you. Let us stand in the gap for you so that you can be free. I've seen these my whole life since I was four years old. And I've been documenting this more and more lately. And it's like, that's the world I want to live in. I want to live in the world where amazing things are happening. Goodness is happening. Love is happening. Healing is happening. Humanity is embarking on this the most brilliant and prolific journey of what we are capable of receiving love and giving the love that we receive to one another. And the world is so filled with goodness and beauty that anything, it seems, is possible. And yet that, as real as that seems to me, feels like the greatest distance. Maybe I, I've even thought, I told my wife this a couple of years ago that I've had these visions so visceral. I could, I can feel it. I can see it. It's almost like, has it already happened in another life, another timeline, another dimension? Maybe because it's so visceral in my mind. There's no ego. I don't think I have to say that, but there's not an ego sense of like, oh, I got to be on stage. It's like, man, we get to be part of something so great, so beautiful, so grand that it was so humbling to be there and used in such a way. Like that to me seems the most incredible existence. But I told my wife a couple of years ago, I said, if this doesn't happen, and I've had these visions, I've, I've had it's not just visions. I've had people come validate. I mean, I've I've gotten selected to speak to the elite, the global elite, and I got fired from the global elite. It's just the crazy. I've had crazy stories. And by the way, I told them about the beauty of humanity, which is why I got fired. Anyway, I have had these really unusually serendipitous aligned circumstances my whole life. So coupled that, and I'm not making this about me, I'm just sharing something. I coupled that with this, these visions, this like innate knowing of who I am or who am I and how does this all work and what am I here for and why did I go through the pain and the darkness and the suffering, the evil and the, the sexual and physical abuse, all these things. Why did I go through these things? It was like, wow, if I saw this vision come to life, everything would be worth it. And I told my wife a couple of years ago, if this doesn't happen someday, to me, it would be the greatest curse. It would almost be a sadistic curse placed upon me as if God is playing the most cos cruelest cosmic joke ever. And yet I still believe that it's going to happen. I mean, you listening, I, I see, I don't actually see your... IP address, but I have analytics. I see people listen to this podcast all over the world and I'm honored that you do. And I'm thankful that you do. And, and I love you all. You hear me. And I share that. I love you all. And I'm, I'm honored. And it's like, man, is that not the world that we all want to live in? It's, it's events all over the world, Brazil, Australia, Cambodia, Japan, Russia, United States, like all over Europe, all over Asia, all over South America and North America, just incredible, powerful, love-filled events. That doesn't happen. And all that's left really is the suffering and the pain and the loss and the hurt and the confusion and the dread and the sickness, infirmities, diseases, death. If that's all there is, then what are we doing? So then it gets back to me asking, look, God, are, you know, am I to be angry at God? This is my question to, 
to my friend and and my wife the other day, it's like, I feel so much anger inside of me. Who am I angry at? I don't know who to be angry at. Am I angry at the father who hurt me and hurt my fa- my mother and brother growing up that has no humility to admit that what he did and he still lives in this false reality and just turned people against me for speaking the truth and denying and whatever. Like, am I to be angry at that? That seems small and insignificant. Am I to be angry at myself? Well, I don't ask for these visions and this like innate knowing. I didn't ask for any of this and to some degree, except in the soul contract world, I have, I think I did, but am I to be angry at God? It feels more appropriate to be really angry at God. And yet is the God that I'm angry at really God? That's a question I've been asking. Is the God that you think is God, God? That's a question I really encourage everyone to ask. Even Jesus said, there will be many that come in my name. There will be many false Jesuses, many false Christs. Scripture says it so, and I actually, in that verse, believe it because there are many that come in his name. Am I coming in another name? This is a, this see, this is where it gets fractaled and incredibly disparate and ununified when we start asking these questions. And yet I don't feel like there's a place to go to ask these questions because I guess it scares people to ask them, but I have to ask these questions because I'm trying to find the truth because I believe truth is the only thing that makes us free. And I crave freedom more than anything. And I know that love brings truth and truth brings freedom. So it is love that I'm truly craving. And in that love that we are made free which is those events, which is the world that I believe we're entering and creating. And yet it seems such a far place from it right now. I've been listening to this song, The Goodness of God, over and over by C.C. Winans. I'm going to actually put it in the show notes. It's, It's so beautiful. And I've been playing it on repeat and on repeat and on repeat. And it's just been a song that I can hear her sing it and I know she's really singing it, you know? So there's a lot of recording artists that will record a song and then it's just, it's perfectly delivered. It's perfectly sung, but it's not their soul singing it. But this, this song, CC Winans, her soul is singing it and you can feel it. So this morning I go to the chiropractor with my wife, take her to the doctors and I walk in and what song's playing, but that song. And I laugh. It's like, of course. And yet that synchronicity, what am I to do with that? What are you to do with all the synchronicities? What am I to do with every time I look at my phone and the same numbers, 333, 111, 1111, 1212, 444, 555, like 222. What am I to do with all these things that happen all the time? Is this a sign that goodness is happening? I know many people say those are demons and blah, blah. You know what? then it is so, then it's all demonic and there's no hope. Oh, there's only hope in Jesus. Well, where's Jesus? Jesus, Hill Zeus, the father, the father of the pantheon. Perhaps we're told that Zeus was evil and Zeus was a philanderer and Zeus had many vindictive relationships. Perhaps that's the greatest lie. If everything's inverted truth, maybe that's an an inversion of truth. That Zeus is the father God is benevolent, good, and loving, but all the demigods, all the sub-gods that were the fallen angels, you want to call them, the watchers, you can talk about Spice at the Book of Enoch, you can can take it from the Bhagavad Gita and all the different beings and that, you can look at it from any way you want to slice and dice it. At the end of the day, all of this is fractaled and none of it brings love, none of it brings peace, none of it brings unity. It's like, I almost wondered yesterday... I mean, I didn't almost wonder. I did wonder, but I almost came to a conclusion. Is knowledge not good to have? The knowledge of good and evil, knowing both good and evil was the fruit bared from the tree that Adam and Eve were told not to eat of. 
we're told knowledge is power. But if the knowledge that is accessible or what we're told is knowledge is false knowledge, then is that power? That's not power. That's weakening. So false knowledge makes us weak. Real knowledge makes us powerful according to that paradigm. But then what? who's to say what's real knowledge? And I do know that how we can tell if something's true or not is if we can breathe more deeply because truth makes us free and freedom starts with our breath. Fear constricts our breath. So I know that our body keeps a score. I know that knowledge isn't wrong, but it also seems like some way to justify the knowledge. I have to. Because I'm seeking something that just doesn't seem accessible. But I believe it is accessible. I hope this makes sense. The knowledge is like I the more I study the religions, the the philosophies, the political stances, like every channel and every person in this. And all the infighting and the back channeling and the accusations. It's like, man, this world sucks. And yet the one thing I noticed this past week, the one thing that has no threat to humanity, nothing, no, no energy of negative context to humanity is colors, our colors. Color. Color is so neutral. I look at the colors of the sky and the plants and the leaves, and we have a holly tree in our backyard and the green leaves and the red berries. And like that color combination, like how did color know, or how did God know? What is this coded beauty in color? But it colors are so incredible. There's definitely some deep meaning in color. And yet what is the meaning? And is that knowledge worth having? If I have the knowledge of like, yes, that is the truth of color. And if you apply these certain colors this way, there is a code that get, gets unlocked and you up level or you rise into more power and more presence. Maybe that's true. I don't know. But I'm asking these questions because I look around even right now outside the window and it's just colors are everywhere. The browns, the greens, the, the reds, the blues, the grays, like Man, there's so much color. Color seems to be neutral. So as I share this, I'm like, what was the point of me getting on here and sharing all this? The point was when we don't have progress, we feel stuck. And when we feel stuck is when dread, hope, despair, fear creeps in. Many people are laid off from jobs. Many people are, I mean, I'm trying to fill a men's retreat and I have had many calls with guys and they just can't afford it. And I'm like, man, that I've, I can, I can afford it. And I'm not charging like what others are. I'm like, what is happening? I'm not bringing it about me or money. What I'm saying is progress equals happiness. And so if you're feeling stuck, if you're getting laid off, if you've been laid off, if, if family's sick or whatever, here is my encouragement, dear brother and sister. Two things. Do one thing, one thing. No matter how small it is, just do one thing. Wherever you are, that will get you one step out of your current circumstance. So for instance, if you're feeling stuck and dread and depressed, go walk around the block. Or go apply, if you're looking for jobs, just apply to 50 jobs right now on an Indeed or LinkedIn or whatever job boards you use. Just apply. Whether you get them or not, you putting forth your effort to make progress is creating motion and it is going to impact your emotion, your energy and motion, which will help you feel better. So I've had a crazy nutty day But yeah, just some of the things that I just talked about, I've done and I feel a little better. doesn't change the circumstance. I can look around and I'm like, oh, there's, there it is. <laughs> but I needed to make some progress and not rely on someone else or something else to save me. And, you know, I've posted this before that no one's coming to save you, which was a complete antithetical statement to Jesus came to save you. <laughs> But 
but no one is coming to save you because the point of this existence is you saving yourself, you putting the oxygen mask on yourself first, you doing the work and healing your own trauma, you taking responsibility for your behaviors, thoughts, ad- actions, and patterns, you doing the work. And when we as individuals, the I does the work together, comes together as the us, the collective doing the most powerful, prolific work as individuals, this is how we create the world that we want to see. This is how we step into it. It is us doing the small steps of progress, just a little bit more, a little bit more. It's like no one brushes our teeth one time. It's like, well, that was that one time I brushed my teeth. My teeth are clean. No, we got to brush your teeth every day. Shower every day. Get dressed every day. It's the same with progress. You got to do something every day. Every day. And what's interesting for me, just as an observation before I wrap here, the progress I used to make was like I'd read the Bible cover to cover, <clears throat> finish on Genesis or Revelation chapter 22. The next day I would start in Genesis 1. So I read it cyclically and not only read it cyclically, so I would read from Genesis all the way to Revelation, Genesis to Revelation, but then I would read the corresponding proverb of the day because there's 31 proverbs. I would read a proverb for every day of the week, read that every morning, I read a psalm. and I'd, So I'd read through psalm, psalms and proverbs every day and I'd get through those as I was reading the Bible in addition. So anyway, I would read over and over and over. But it didn't feel like progress. And I remember the seventh time I had finished reading the Bible, I was really angry because I was still dealing with all the internal self-hatred and struggling uh, issues and the trauma. And I had never talked about or faced and dealt with, but I knew something was wrong with me. And I thought that yeah, the Bible, like it's truth and it liberates, but it wasn't. It, it was like good to know. And it's in me, you know, that verse, thy word, if I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. It's in me, but that wasn't enough knowledge. It wasn't progress. It was like a retreading on the same treadmill, essentially. So I started reading other books. I started reading other philosophies, other things, other things that would be considered anathema to others and myself, even back then. But I started reading. I started stepping out. I started actually doing these things. Why I bring that up? Not to talk about myself, but through that experience of me taking a little bit of progress of one step further, one new thing to learn, read, do, try. Even today, I applied for many jobs just needing to not be stuck in the circumstance that we find ourselves dreading doing just one small step will get you out of that dark dread. Even if it's for a little bit, even if it's just for a little reprieve, it is worth it. So my dear brother and my dear sister, I don't know what you're going through. You know some of what I'm going through. <laughs> um, but I do know this. I do believe this. You're more powerful than it. It's hard to find the space to really hit that power source. And it's hard to find the space to remember amidst the wind howling and the rains beating us down. And it's just the chaos of the moment. It is hard. It's very hard. So you listening to this podcast is time away to break away, to take some progress. Me applying for jobs or me lifting weights today that, that was a little bit of progress, which made me feel better. And at the end of the day, when we feel better, we do better. And when we do better, this world becomes a better place. And how truth is doled out, how the existential reality or philosophical questions that we can slice and dice, everyone has an opinion, everyone thinks they're right. All of that will be revealed in time. Your nice job is just to continually getting back up tomorrow and keep punching, keep going, keep doing it. 
as we do, we not only give other people hope that they can do the same thing, but we give ourselves hope that the work that we're doing, the actions we're taking are bringing a higher vibration inside of us and more blessings to us. So my dear brothers and sisters, that's what I wanted to share. I love you all. I know it's a crazy time. It is a crazy time. And as I tell you always, you are not alone. Okay. I think that's such an important thing to know. You're not alone. You're not alone. You could email me any question you have about any wild thought you have out there and just know, I will say, yeah, great. You're not alone. You don't have to be afraid of your thoughts. You don't have to be afraid of speaking. You don't have to be afraid of thinking. You don't have to be afraid of living outside the box, outside the confines on the other side of the fence. Oh, what's over there? Guess what? Just more opportunity. So don't be afraid. Keep going, dear brother and sister. I love you all. I am Lucas Mack. This is the Golden Rule Revolution, and I will talk to you on the next episode. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for listening. For support in your journey, go to my website, lucasmack.com dot com.